What's going on guys? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how you become a scout or a sniper in the U.S. Army. And this is going to be, I don't know what else is out there, but we're talking specifically Army infantry, okay? And that's the reason I say scout or sniper is because in the uh, Marine Corps, they call them scout snipers, I believe. Uh, in the Army, there is a difference. There's a scout position and there is a sniper position, both coexist in the same platoon and for me I'm going to be talking from my personal experience at a battalion scout platoon level okay because and the reason I'm, I'm uh, making this video is because when I came into the army I was really into the idea of becoming a sniper how do I become a sniper I actually didn't find out how to become a sniper for like a year and a half into my uh, enlistment so um, you're going to go through your infantry basic training and then any follow-on training airborne whatever you uh, end up doing and you're gonna get to your unit. Okay, this is gonna happen after you get to your unit There's no way to guarantee you a spot as a sniper or a scout before getting to your unit Once you get to your unit You're gonna have to you're probably gonna go to a line platoon very very rarely Do you ever get recruited right into a scout platoon? I've seen it happen once a kid just came in with over a 300 PT score into our battalion and they like scooped him right in, ended up having a bunch of problems because he didn't actually go through our selection process that we have. And so there's that, but it can happen. Um, so once you get to your standard line platoon is probably what you're gonna report to where you're gonna either be a grenadier, rifleman, or a saw gunner. Um, they're probably gonna expect you to do some time there, but you don't necessarily have to. Uh, the scout platoon in the sniper section is located in the headquarters company, okay, HHC. I didn't know that because those guys were like ghosts to me. They didn't exist on my radar when I was on the line. And uh, all the way through my deployment, I didn't even know that they existed because they are doing, they do their own thing. It's a like a 30 man element, maybe 40 man element that exists in HHC away from all the line companies. So you never see them, you never train with them. They're, they have their own special mission set that they have to train for that doesn't have anything to do with what the line guys do. Um, so that's why you won't see them. That's why you won't hear about them really. Uh, you have to go probably over to HHC. Like if you can't ask your, uh, your any of your uh, first or second line supervisors or anything, your NCOs, when scout tryouts are, then you're going to have to go over to HHC and ask them like where the scouts are at. And you're gonna have to go talk to them about tryouts and when they might have tryouts. We would have tryouts like three times a year, two or th two to four times a year, I think. Um, and it's, it's pretty, it's not too crazy, okay? So once you get in contact with them and you figure, they're probably gonna have a sign-up sheet for tryouts or they might post flyers around your battalion area. Um, that's how you're gonna have to initially do it is you're gonna have to sign your name and you're actually gonna have to show up to the tryouts and tell your leadership that you have that you're doing scout tryouts and that that's what you want to do and you're going to go do that they can't really hold you from scout tryouts especially once you've made contact with the scout platoon and even if you tell them that hey my ncos aren't letting me come then they'll they'll straighten that shit out so going through the tryouts the tryouts are uh typically they try to the way that we do it okay i can only speak from my platoon's experience and what we did um because we had a guy who had been through higher level selections. I'll just say that. I don't get into the specifics of what different things he's tried, he's uh, gone to selection for and where he came from, but um, he kind of ran it like the, like the sort like a mini special forces selection. Um, so we would start out, I think it was like an, uh, an RPFT, which is a Ranger PT test. So your push ups, sit ups, a five mile run, and then a pull up test um, and I think after that on the first day we had a swim test and that was it for the first day of tryouts and then um, the next day I believe we went into land nav or no we had yeah I already said the swim test the next day we went into land nav um, and I think these tryouts only covered like three to three to four days I think and so we went into land nav land nav is set up like the special forces star course meaning their longer movements. It wasn't the whole star course and this was on Bragg. So I think we did part of this land nav course in the star course area, but not all of it. Uh, there were longer movements, several clicks per movement. You're carrying your ruck with you the whole way and you're carrying a weapon. 
and we ended up doing day into night land nav. So we did have night vision that we uh, used as it got darker. Um, and you don't get all of your points right from the get go. You get one point and then you have to go and find that point. And then once you get to that point, they give you your next point and so on and so forth until you complete it or you get your minimum required uh, amount of points. Directly after that, we had an unknown distance, unknown standard ruck. So this is like in the middle of the night. Um, they basically say, hey, you're gonna stay here. At every time you hit a chem light, you're gonna turn. Um, there's gonna be a, like a, an NCO there that's gonna tell you where to go. And then you're just gonna, you're gonna keep going. We're not gonna tell you, they don't tell you how long it is. They don't tell you what the time standard is. You're just trying to go as far as you can, as fast as you can. And um, I think ours was just shy of 12 miles. And um, I think I did it in like just under three hours and I, I made it. So uh, never found out what the standard was exactly. But, so this is going into the morning and after our unknown distance, unknown uh, time standard ruck, we had a, a rig X. So that's probably an airborne specific unit thing. Uh, your scout, even if you are in an airborne unit, your scout platoon might not make you do that, but we had to do that. We had to uh, rig our rucksacks for an airborne operation. And then that was the end of that night. Um, we got like chow and got trans uh, back to our battalion AO. So in the morning, um, and I, so I think it was only three days that this really took. In the morning, because we'd kind of finished all that stuff, um, and it wasn't too demanding, it was more of just like a mental test to do that really long land nav that you didn't know how long it was, and then to go and do that ruck immediately after. We ended up putting quite a few miles on our feet in those two days, and um, following that morning, it was just in an interview with all the NCOs in the scout platoon because it is called the scout platoon and then there the sniper section is internal of the scout platoon so once i got into the interview they go over your erb and all the things that you've done and your time in service and your different positions that you've had and they just talk to you and it's very informal it's not like a board you just come in you sit down and they just talk to you like man to ncos and they're just asking you questions about your personality where you came from what your passions are like what you want to do in the military and um, what position you'd like to have in the scout platoon. So naturally, as I said, I wanted to come into the army and be a sniper. So I just said straight up, I would like to be a sniper. And then they said, uh, but I did say, um, I'd like to be a sniper, but I understand if I have to start somewhere else and then hopefully work up to that eventually. And they were like, okay, so you're cool with being a scout and then maybe eventually we'll transition you over to become a sniper. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I just, I wanna come over here. Um, because it was a way more laid back atmosphere, that's for sure. Um, it's funny because all the guys who said they wanted to be snipers ended up not being snipers and all the guys who didn't necessarily say that they wanted to be snipers, they didn't care, they got put in sniper positions. So take that for what you will. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you one way or the other how to answer a question like that and how it might affect your chances. But either way, if you end up in the scout platoon, you're going to have a more enjoyable time in that platoon because you're gonna be training by yourselves um, because you're, you have a reconnaissance mission. It's very different from the lines mission. So you're not gonna be training with those guys very often. You're gonna be doing your own thing and you will be working with them, but you're going to like, for what we would do on a regular basis is we would jump into an objective or air assault into an objective before the rest of our battalion. And then we would conduct reconnaissance for several hours. And then once our battalion did their thing and secure the DZ and all that, then they would uh, get in comms with us and we would have already found the best entry route for them to come into the objective. And then we would meet with them, guide them in. We would talk to, the, uh, to their leadership for that company's uh, whatever element we're dealing with. We'd give them all the information we had and a lot, we would have pictures and we had laptops and a bunch of really cool shit that we'd get to use and we would show them like, hey, at this building, there's this many guys at this area. And then we'd give them a whole layout of the entire village. That's what your job is, is giving, you're doing reconnaissance to provide to the line companies. And your job is to not be compromised. So you're being sneaky and stealthy and shit. And then you guide them in and you tell them the best way, the, the most vulnerable part of a village or a building. And then they will take that and then they assault the objective accordingly. 
So because of that, it's a it's a thinking game because you're trying to be you're trying to maintain your level of stealth and not being compromised. That's like the biggest thing. Your job as a as a recon infantryman is not to get compromised and to not get in gunfights. You're supposed to never be seen, and if you get into a gunfight, you did something wrong. So um, it's it's fun that way though because you're having to use your brain. Being on the line is very robotic. And you do the same thing over and over and over again every single time you go no matter what the objective is you're basically doing the same exact thing and the scout platoon is very different because you have to approach the objective differently and then depending on what your specific job in the scout platoon is um, they're usually very hands-off they train you how to do your job and then they expect you to do your job and if you can't do it then they'll they'll boot you like if you suck they'll kick you out of the scout platoon so you are constantly working to prove yourself and prove that you belong there and that you are an asset to that platoon. With that comes a lot of freedoms because you're out operating with a like a five to six man element and you can be out there for days at a time and uh, a lot of times they might have you doing route reconnaissance so you're just posted up in a hide site watching a road and you might have friendly elements over here setting up base of operations and then you have to give them early warning and you're not going to go get in a gunfight but you're going to give them early warning if anybody's coming into their AO um, or area of operations um, so it's it's a cool job getting to like actually use ghillie suits and use stealth and really think through what your job is and do your job independent independently of the rest of your team and actually being trusted to do that and problem solve on the fly and because of that I think it it's kind of hard to come back to the line after that because you're so used to thinking for yourself and doing a job that you're trusted to do even as a private if you get into scout platoon as a private then you're held to the same standard so overall um, it kind of ruined me in a way because like now I'm back in a line infantry unit and uh, we were a lurse unit and then um, they got rid of all the lurch units in the army, so now we're going back to being a line infantry. And all the guys are having a, a really hard time not being able to think for themselves and ask questions and just being expected to do things by the book. Um, but it's so much fun. Uh, and it looks really good on your, on your resume, on your ERB. Having a experience in a reconnaissance unit means that you had to be specially selected to get that position, so it usually carries some weight uh, moving on with your career as you as you go up and you get promoted and stuff. So I can't recommend it enough. Uh, there's no guarantee that you'll be a sniper, um, but I promise. Like I wanted to be a sniper, and I ended up being a, a scout RTO, which so I held the radio. And being a scout RTO is very different from being a line uh, RTO. A line RTO basically follows around the PL everywhere he goes, and you're just talking on the on the radio for him essentially um there's a, there's obviously a lot of other roles and responsibilities that you have as a line rto but as a scout rto you're doing your own thing you like you you as a private or a specialist are on the radio with first sergeants sergeants major uh, battalion commanders company commanders very high-ranking people and they're talking to you like a man as a valid source of information on what is on the objective. They're actually trusting you. You know, you are this, you might be a private or a specialist, but you have been selected for this position. And if, when you come to them, like I can think of several times where there's even one time going into a, this little mock training village that I had a platoon sergeant get on the radio with me and said that, and said, hey, we're coming this way. We're gonna walk in from this direction and we got on the radio and we were like hey negative you probably don't want to go that way and this is me as like a, a like a two and a half year e4 on the radio with an e7 saying uh negative sorry you probably don't want to do that it's very thick and very thick with vegetation and really flooded out with water you're not your element with all of your machine guns and everybody that they have their massive element you guys probably aren't going to get through that very easily we have another route for you to take and he just said negative we're going to take this way it's like all right whatever do your thing <laughs> well we ended up getting to listen to them on the radio as they lost contact with a lot of their elements because they couldn't get through and they ended up getting broken up and it delayed the whole mission a long time and they ended up actually coming to us and i had to go meet this e7 in the woods as he came up to this position we told him to come to and then we just came out of the woods and they didn't even know we were there and come up and be like hey 
uh, and he just sees that you're some low ranking dude and you're like, Hey, Sergeant, we're going to go this way. And so you, what you're doing directly affects like the rest of the element is relying on you to do that job and being trusted to have a position like that, that is so mission essential to the success of that mission, um, is a great feeling. Uh, like I said, because you guys are working in such small elements, uh, a lot of times the standards are laxed. I mean, if it doesn't, if it doesn't directly contribute to mission success, they usually get rid of it, like regulations and standards. Um, if you're going out on a mission for three days, you're taking exactly what you need for three days. So you're not taking like your hygiene kit and you're not taking anything extra. So there's a lot of times you come back and you're not shaven and your uniform's all ragtag and dirty. And uh, we would be rolling our sleeves. We wouldn't have any patches. We'd have slick uniforms because um, in a real life, scenario if you got compromised and caught you wouldn't want to have any unit identifiers or nationality identifiers um because you you wouldn't want them to know that you're americans you know what i mean They're, it's kind of that train of thought um so there'd be a lot of times when we were just kind of doing our own thing what we had to do to be successful unblossing our boots rolling our sleeves having slick uniforms um you know, just wearing the bare minimum gear that a lot of the line guys would look at us and be like, who the hell are these guys? And uh, it's it's a blast. My uh, culminating event, I got to jump into JRTC attached to part of a British reconnaissance element. And uh, I actually still have a lot of stuff hung up that I got from those British dudes. But um, that was like an experience I'll never forget. Being embedded with a British team and getting to to conduct reconnaissance and learn their ways of doing it. And uh, there, you just get a lot of uh, unique opportunities that guys on the line are never going to get. And you're gonna have a much different view of the infantry at, at that low level uh, that you wouldn't otherwise get. And so I can't recommend it enough. I know being a scout or a sniper is a very popular thing. So I just wanted to put this out there for you guys coming into the army. If you are coming in wanting to be a sniper, this is the pathway to do it. So get to your element or get to your unit, ask them about scout tryouts and go to the HHC AO and ask them about scout tryouts. And that's going to get you started down that path. So thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button, subscribe button, uh, send me comments down below. If you're in the Marine Corps, what your whole uh, selection process was like. Um, if you're in other units, cause I was in the one five Oh eight in the 82nd airborne and that, so that's how my selection process went. Let me know how your guys' was and what your experiences were in your respective scout platoons. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.